I collected soil, water and plants from a river and I left it in this jar for the last 50 days to see what develops inside. I don't know what it is but it's really fast. And since I love comparisons, I did the same in a pond, a hot spring, a black water pond and even the ocean. So in this video we are gonna see the different living beings that grew inside each jar, starting with the hot spring. With water emerging at an impressive temperature of 70 degrees Fahrenheit, everything looked so white I believed there wasn't any life. So I tried my best to scrape the sides of the spring and I collected the stones from the bottom. It didn't look very promising at first, but after two weeks life made its way through. Look at them, two larvae from some insect. At least there were eggs in the hot spring. You can also sense some plants growing as well. I thought the hot spring was going to be very interesting, but it's been really boring. Just compare it with this river jar after the same two weeks. What a contrast. This is the jar after 50 days. There's a few worms and a ton of algae. Algae really won here. They are growing everywhere. On the glass, on the stones, floating on the surface. Since algae are not the most fun thing to watch, let's move to another environment. And if the hot spring was so bleak, check out this pond. I've got an extremely overcrowded jar from here. It's full of water snails from this species, which is an invasive species where I live. I've been researching them and these guys are indestructible. They can live in fresh and brackish water, survive desiccation. They can be eaten by birds and they are still alive. That's how they move to new areas. And I caught way too many of them. I can keep them in this small jar. I feel like it would be cruel. So I'm putting as many as I can in this ecosystem which is slightly bigger. But I have to think about what I should do with them. I have to consider this as a failed jar because I interfered. But there's another pond, a nasty looking one, with black water and an oily film on the surface. I don't think there will be anything interesting in this water. Luckily I was wrong about it. Once the water cleared up a bit, the small arthropods became evident. Ostracods, copepods and daphnias were happily living in... Yeah. And I also caught my archenemy, mosquito larvae. After two weeks, most of the larvae had transformed into full-grown mosquitoes. I couldn't film the transformation, but you can watch me releasing them so they can live in their natural environment. The window. This jar never developed plants or algae, and it makes me nervous to film this dirty glass. So let's move to the next place, the ocean. This is an experiment. I've never done this before with salt water, so I tried to collect as much diversity as I could. There are at least five different species of algae. I don't know their names, but if I'm not wrong, this is sea lettuce. So according to me, these must be sea linguine noodles and those ones growing on the stone, sea spaghetti noodles. There are also two different types of brown algae, but spoiler, they didn't survive the first month. So I'm not giving them a name, I don't want to get attached. When I arrived home, I started to search for animals inside, and to my surprise, copepods. These things are literally everywhere, how is it possible? It took just a week for the brown algae to start losing color. I'm not sure why they didn't make it in this closed environment. All the green algae are still alive, and I feel they even grow a little bit. After a month, the brown algae are completely white. There's still microscopic things moving inside, but not as many as there were on the first day. I feel it's harder for the sea creatures to thrive in a closed jar. Luckily I discarded this snail when I was doing the pickup. I always try to keep out the animals I know won't make it inside my small ecosystems. Like this stonefly larva, or this tiny frog I found in the river. And there's a jar I didn't show you yet, the one I made in the river. The quickly flowing water is very different to the still water in the jar, so I didn't expect many things to adapt. When I inspected the jar for the first time, I already found interesting things inside, like this little guy running hectically. I think it's a water mite, but I'm not quite sure. Since it's always moving, it's difficult to identify it properly. I also found this worm, but the mite didn't like it. After two weeks, I noticed hair algae growing from the soil. And this thing, I saw it while I was reviewing the footage, so I don't know what it is. Now it's been a month since the last time I checked on this jar, and I'm happy to announce the mite is still running hectically all over, and now it has friends. 
There's also something buried in the sediment, but it was impossible to record it with my smartphone. What I could film was this thick worm. I don't think it's the same one I saw the first day. To be honest, it looks more like a leech. After 50 days, I think I can call it a day. These jars take up too much space, so I'm mixing everything to make a complex ecosystem, obviously with an exception. I want to keep tracking the evolution of the ocean jar. I'd like to know if it's possible to make a low maintenance ecosystem out of a tidal pool. So first I need to learn which organisms can survive in this closed environment. 